It's cool as shower than I thought it was. So this is gonna be interesting because we have the latest and greatest action cameras from GoPro and DJI. So the Hero 11 and the Action 3, and they are clearly going head to head right now. They, they're releasing these cameras an hour apart from each other. And GoPro, definitely the pioneer. They're the flagship action camera since the beginning of action cameras. You really gotta give them credit because they created an entire new genre of cameras. By the way, I realized that it looks like the statue is peeing, but no, they're, they're, they're holding a pot. So design-wise, there's not much different here. It's the same shape and size and everything's very familiar. It will work with the media mod. The lens still comes off the same way and all that. So that's great if you invested in some accessories. DJI looks like it adopted a very similar form factor. Lens here, screen here, battery door flips out like that. Big screen on the back. I do love that they carry this over though. So this just magnetically attaches to the bottom right there. So it's a quick attach. And you do want to just make sure that it's securely on there because sometimes you'll magnetically attach it and it's not fully on there so it could fly off. Now I really want to focus on image quality so I'll show you a bunch of footage we shot with these cameras here in Bali and before I tell you guys which camera is which, see which camera you guys like better. I'm seeing like the colors are a little more saturated on the left. Yeah, I think I look more muscular on the left. <laughs> the left one has much more detail. Yeah, and yeah like there's way more the detail. So you can see all the highlights are blown out. Left it's looks like, like it just generally has more color. Yeah, in better detail. Left, I think dynamic range wise it's better. I like the one on the left the because there's more dynamic range on the sky. The stabilization's a little bit smoother on the left than the one on the right. Yeah, I just like the colors on the left so much better. Right looks a little, um, maybe a little softer than the left in that last shot. I think the right is probably more true true to color, but the left actually, for me, the, it looks the more The left pleasing. looks better on this shot for sure. It looks to me a little like the left might be a little more stable. A lot more color. Better color in the hair on the, the left. Skin tones. Yeah, skin, yeah, skin tones, tones in general. On the left. I mean, you can see the noise here, right there on the black. See? Oh yeah. On Carrie's like, shirt. Yeah. Yeah, her tattoos like an old look TV. much more crisp on the left. Now the left on this one, the detail in the clouds looks a lot better. Yeah. A lot sharper on this one. So this one on the right, it's totally crushed when it was backlit. Mm -hmm. The left was not. I just think the one on the right overexposes a little bit more. Yeah. I would go with the left one. Same. The right is probably more color accurate, but the left is more pleasing to me. But I wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I still like the right. You like the right, okay. Like the right. Why did we I think they both look guy? good. What? <laughs> 120 FPS. Oh, left looks a little more um, zoomed in, right? It just seems like the one on the right overexposes a little more. It just seems lighter, doesn't it? The left is doing a better job. Yeah, it's right? more sure. blue. The right is pretty green. And the one on the left still looks more vibrant. These are both just in auto white balance, so I didn't put either of them into like the underwater mm. white balance. Stabilization on the left is better right now. You can clearly see that. Skin you know, be helped by the crop. The left are so much better. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, the skin's gonna have like his tattoos, yeah. a little bit yeah. darker, his skin's more pale in this shot. So this four. is 240 yeah. frames per second. Yeah, so but this high is frame rate. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this a belly flop content? Yeah. You got to high. And the stones on the bottom of the pool look very different on the right. Look much better on the right. Well, here, look at the skin tones again, though. Left has still got better skin tones. Yeah. Well, you know, I like the skin tones on the left a little bit more than the right right here for, for the, these shots. But I feel like it's... Uh... Softer? Softer. Yeah. Yeah, the one on the right looks sharper. The one on the nice. Yeah. yeah. The sky's all blown out in both of them. Yeah, yeah. but you yeah. can see more detail in the actual leaves. Yeah. yeah. Left looks a little soft. Better exposure on the left just now. It looks like it's better stabilized on the left, though. For the higher speed, I would probably give it to the right. I would go with the left because I don't like, I don't know how to color grade. <laughs> the dynamic range on the right is, is not as good as the left. There's so much less detail on the right, too. Like, it's like yeah, blown yeah. out. That's a, yeah, that's a bad totally. exposure. There's more detail in the shirt on the left. Yeah. Okay. This is something funky okay. going on the left. Less gradient on the left one. The exposure on the left is not great. You definitely see the noise on the right. It's brighter, it's but it's also light. noisier. Yeah. yeah. The right is hands down yeah. better, yeah. like by a mile. Yeah. Colors look better on the right as well. Yeah. Stabilization looks to be worse on the left. Could yeah. not see that That's, screen yeah. at all on the right. In low light, I would choose the right. I prefer the one on the right 100%. Yeah. Definitely picks up the colors a lot better. And the stabilization. Yeah. So if you can manually underexpose your settings slightly, I'd prefer the camera on the right. The noise reduction on the left is just out of control. Yeah. It's definitely greener on the left. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, there we go, yeah. The right, the right's better. Like, this is on our walk home last night. Yeah. So, barely any light. 
The one on the left still looks more saturated. Look at the bricks and look at the floor. Yeah, right. I think for the low light, I'd give it to the right. I agree. It was more brighter, detail. caught more detail. Yeah. Slightly better color. It, it seemed saying. it was a little more stable too. Yeah, a lot more stable. I would yeah. say. Yeah, the low light. If you were to tell me to choose a camera, Little I'd choose the one on the left. Yeah. yeah. I'd still go right. Look, they're both amazing images. Like, it, it's just picking between two, two good options. All right, so you guys ready for this big reveal? The camera on the left was the GoPro. What I noticed about the GoPro was that it generally had better dynamic range, especially up there in the skies and the highlights so I could always see the clouds. And I think that also plays into why it had pretty good auto exposure since it can get a lot of that information in one frame. It doesn't have to go and shift the exposure around as the shot changes. But on the other hand, DJI did seem to have better low light performance in a lot of cases. And I think this generally lines up with what you might expect out of the specs because the DJI has a slightly larger sensor. It's one over 1.7 inch opposed to the GoPro which is 1 over 1.9 and the aspect ratio of these sensors are actually different so the DJI Action 3 is a pretty standard 4x3 so taller than your standard 16x9 but the GoPro's brand new sensor is now a 7x8 so it's almost a square that's useful if you're just trying to export out in widescreen like I am right now by just trimming off the top and bottom and you still have the 5.3k resolution side to side but let's see your trying to take that same shot and re-export it out for Instagram or TikTok, something vertical. You don't have to crop into that frame nearly as much. I'm sure the taller sensor is gonna make it easier for the GoPro to give us horizon steady. So even if you roll the camera around like that, it still looks level opposed to the Action 3, which does require to drop that resolution. I'm still getting a nice super wide image even when it's stabilized out of both these cameras. That was a complaint I had about the original Osmo. So wide and stabilized from both. But one of the things I did notice is that when I'm shooting in linear mode, so trying to make things look less fisheye, then the GoPro does seem to punch in quite a bit more. But overall, when it comes to the image quality, my personal preference is definitely the GoPro. I always love having more dynamic range and also GoPro's given us 10-bit color now. So we're starting to get 10-bit color in action cameras, which is awesome. By the way, DJI is also gonna be giving us 10-bit in here. So excited to test that out. Not sure if that's gonna add to the dynamic range necessarily, because that's more of a sensor thing, but we'll have to test that out when we get that firmware update. So do these tests make it much easier to pick out what kind of action camera to get? Not quite, because DJI is super competitive with pricing. So this Action 3 is gonna be $329, and the GoPro is going to be $499. So that's a pretty big price difference. Now you can get the GoPro for about a hundred bucks off for $399 if you get the subscription with GoPro, which can be useful because if you destroy your GoPro, then you can get it swapped out and you don't have to pay full price for it. But the camera that me personally, I'm most excited about is right here, Hero 11 Black Mini. I believe this is gonna give us the same image quality while using the same sensor that we've been testing out with this new 11 black, but just in a smaller package. No screen, but look at this, fingers on the back, so more mounting options. Uh, this camera I do not have yet, but when it comes in, I want to do a more in-depth test, and maybe by then, this will have 10 bit, so I could do those side-by-side -side comparisons. And I also want to overheat test everything as well, but looking at the specs, it seems very similar here. Now, it is interesting because it is going to be a built-in battery, so you can't swap it out. I was hoping that the Mini would be a bit more lightweight for FPV drones, but it's 133 grams when the full-size one is 153 grams. And the DJI Action 3 is 145 grams, so it kind of sits in the middle there. It does seem like it's the same mounts as the Action 2, so if you already have some of these rigged up on your helmet or whatever, you can just swap them out. But this mount in particular did come with the Action 3, and it's just not quite fitting the Action 2, not wanting to lock into there. Hey, you're a big fan of the Action 2s. Do you like the mount? I do like the mount. It's actually my favorite part. Yeah. I always switch it from like my backpack to like a selfie stick or something. Has it ever fallen off on you? It has not. It has not. No. It only has for me once, which is when I crashed an FPV drone. Well, so it makes sense though. A lot of things break yeah. when I crash FPV <laughs> drones, <laughs> including uh, my GoPro. We're not talking about that. See, that crash was impressive because it 
destroyed both the front and rear screen. And oh, but it's still recorded. Oh, it's really? still recorded every frame of it. It's a good thing that last minute I decided to bring two FPV drones because I knew that I would definitely destroy at least one. Comparing GoPro's Hyper Smooth 5.0 to DJI's Rocksteady, they're both generally really, really good but they both also have their moments of weirdness. But the huge advantage GoPro has is when it comes to real steady. So you can actually shoot stabilized and if you're unhappy with results or you're seeing some robotic movements or whatever, you can add on stabilization on top of it with the gyro data to already stabilize footage, which is something that's very unique. But I swear real steady just has the magic sauce where it's just like guaranteed floaty, super smooth, no robotic movements, it just glides. Okay, so now that you guys know the qualities of each, can you guys guess this camera? Probably the DJI, just based off of how wildly it was swinging uh, exposure in some of the shots a minute ago. I, I look at DJI. Details are pretty dark in the shadows. DJI, yeah, I think it's DJI. DJI. It is the DJI. You've had pretty much every GoPro since what? The the four. The four? Yeah. And you've upgraded every time? Yes, I have. So that's the 10? Yep. You're a firefighter, so I imagine overheating can sometimes be an issue. You can, yeah. You go into burning houses that are 400 degrees? Yes, or, or more. <laughs> I've actually done some training burns with them, and they only last for about 14 to 15 minutes. 14, 15 minutes? And ah. Then they, and then they, yeah, shut down. Well, basically walking into an oven with it. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to see how these two compare. Now, when comparing this to the previous generation sensor, I am noticing improved dynamic range. It is a whole new sensor, and GoPros have always been super vibrant and colorful, but sometimes I've noticed that it could be a little bit too much. Sometimes I'll see too much orange pushed in, but this new sensor seems to be a little bit more neutral and accurate, which I actually personally like. And I'm also noticing that sometimes it gives us more contrast in parts of the frame while maintaining those highlights. To me, it looks like a good balance of giving us a rich image without clipping. Now, what's interesting is that this Action 3 by itself is more waterproof than the GoPro. So the GoPro is 10 meters and this is 16 meters, which is nice because you can take it on deeper scuba dives and this has a scuba diving mode. And this is something that we got to test out the other day, scuba diving mode. Oh, heck yeah. I thought it was gonna be a white balance adjustment thing, but really what it does is takes the record button from here and puts it off to the side. Yeah. Because once you go past a certain depth, there's so much pressure that a lot of these buttons can just get squeezed in and then all of a sudden you don't have a button. Like it's like thinks it's constantly pressed in. So this button here, it just must have a little bit more rebound or whatever you call it. Just less pressure probably. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's harder to yeah. push down on. Mm -hmm. So even when you get past that certain depth, you can still trigger the record. And Frank took it down on your very first dive. What'd you huh. think? It was awesome. You want to see some footage real quick? Watch, watch. Well, I've actually been showing the B-roll of oh, okay. you diving uh -huh. this whole time. <laughs> so okay. yeah. Was scuba diving a magical experience? It was awesome. It was excellent. I loved it. Okay, so now that you know everything about the GoPro and DJI, which one would you prefer? DJI, for sure. Because of the price? Because of the price, yes. They're both great cameras. How about the GoPro Mini, um, which doesn't have the screen? I'm really not that excited about that one. When you think of the Mini, do you think of FPVing, or do you just think of having a action camera that is small? I mean, I guess my head just goes to FPV, but yeah. I mean, I think when you're gonna mount it on a car and stuff, and also the screen's the easiest part of the camera to break, so okay. Okay. I like hey. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You did break a screen. Please stop bringing that up. <laughs> but that one's going to be priced at 400 bucks. And I think if you're a new user to the GoPro subscription, it's even less. I think it's 300 bucks. <laughs> you can good. still monitor through the app. Uh -huh. But I don't know if you'll be able to monitor through the app while recording. Because a lot of times you could preview your frame. You hit record and it cuts it off. But again, that's something I'm going to have to test. So follow up coming soon. So let me know in the comments about questions and stuff. I'm excited. Cool. to spend more money. <laughs> but that is all thanks to everybody who came and hang out with us in Bali. And also Christian Lost LeBlanc came out and brought his motorcycle out to ride with us in the Black Sand Beach. That was super cool. And even these idiots over here, Nuclear Frank and Ralph. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a cool nickname. <laughs> <laughs>